all right and you can hear um in today's video we are going to make this button over here that you do have like a slide down and a color change um effect that is happening on a button and i did see this um video being created with webflow and i was like this button being created with webflow and i was like why not try it in breakdance and with this we are also going to make sure that we use as much um, of breakdance features without using writing any code um but i think uh, if anything we might have to write a code for um the after sudo element so uh, probably that's what we might do so let's see how that goes so i'm going to click on this and then remove everything that we do have over here and save that i'm going to go into my selector make sure that I remove this selector, remove that selector too, and that is good. All right, so our classes are all gone. We are going to start afresh. So what I'm going to do first is to add a button. So button over here. So this is our button. And the next thing I'm going to do is just type in a word. Let's say my, okay, my, you know, let's call it more blocks um, button. Right, so we do have something like that, and let's customize it a bit more. So let's go into the styling panel and then click on custom. And then in the custom um, spot, I am going to make sure that our corners is round. I'm going to go into typography. I just want to make a little change for typography here. So let's make this a 0.95 REMs. Uh, probably that's a bit too big. Um, let's go ahead, 7, 9 REMs. That is fine. All right, so this is what we do have. And uh, background color, everything is good. I'm not going to touch anything else. Probably let's make background color um, this black, right? And I think that is good. We can also give it our outline probably of two pixels and give this one that. All right, so that is good. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is to add a class or, or an ID. But with this, I'm ju just going to use an ID. So click on the um, this card icon and then choose advanced and down here i'm going to go into the add section and call this one um my btt so my btt and that is good that is good for an id and if you watched my other video um that i did create i did use a class but with this one i am going to use an id just as i've placed over there and why um since that is done, we are going to go into our selector panel, which is on the right hand side, and we are going to start adding our after pseudo element. So, okay, so to do that, I'm going to click on here and then I'm going to put my pound sign and add the club and add the ID name. After doing that, I'm going to give it a shift right and I'm going to add a button. So, B U T T O N. And then after that, I'm just going to put two semicolons, two, two columns over there. And then I'm going to type the word after. So this is what we use to create our pseudo element, our after pseudo element. Um, so after doing, I'm just going to click on add. And then I'm going to go into it by clicking on this icon over here. So to add the pseudo element itself, to add it, even though we've added a class, to add it, we need to go into custom. And then just click on here. You can see that uh, the selection is already pre-populated. And then we're going to type the word content. Let's make sure we type the word right. So content, put a column over there. And then um, two uh, apostrophes, right? Two apostrophes and then a semicolon. So this is how we have created our after pseudo element. So from here, we are going to do a few more things. So make sure that this is correct. So back into our button, right? I am going to go into the search and type the word position and then click on this cog icon and then change this one from change this one to relative. The reason why I am doing that is because we want our pseudo element to have a relate to have. We want our pseudo element when we when we actually like create it, we want it to be related to this very button, not not like anything else on here but to the button so since this is done the next thing that i'm going to do is to go back into our selector you can see that pseudo element is already here i am going to go into um layout and then for display i'm going to make this one inline block that is fine and then after that i'm going to go into size and then for size i'm going to give this one like 100 pixels so you can see that it just made this one a bit longer 
that is what we're looking for. So 100 pixels over there. And then for height too, I'm going to make sure that I give this one also 100 pixels. So you can see that our button is now becoming big, but we don't want that. We actually just want to take out the pseudo element and use it for something else. So let's close our side. We're going to deal with this uh, later on, but let's close it. And then let's look for position. So to do that, you have to dig in more, but I'm just going to type the word position. So I type in the word position where you can see that it pulls it out. And then I'm going to change the position to absolute. So as soon as I did absolute, you can see that now the button is probably back to um, the normal size, right? And that is good. We can say that the top should be zero and that is fine. All right. So let me clear this. And after doing that, we want to see um the, the pseudo element so i'm going to change the background color of that to let's say this so you can see that this is our pseudo element it is right there all right so that is good um the next thing that i am going to do is we want this pseudo element to be behind the to be behind the text so i'm going to type the word index down here and this will pop up for you to move it back you can just use negative one so you can see that now it is behind the text that we do have, which is what we actually looking for. All right, let me clear this. Um, the next thing that I want to do is to make sure that this is in a circular format. To do that, I'm going to go into border and for border, I'm going to make sure this is 100%. So you can see that it looks like a circle and that is what we want for the moment. All right, so the next thing that we do want is we want this whole circle thing which is our pseudo element, we want it to move up so that when we hover on this button, it comes down and fill the entire space. All right, so let's try and do that. So I am going to go back into here and then type in position. Uh, I spelled it wrong, position, right? And for position, I am going to say that we want the top to probably be like a hundred, um, let's say hundred pixels, but let's make sure it's negative so that it goes up and let me bring it down a little so i can see it all right so we do have it over there so we want it to be um this pixels and when we hover we want it to come down right all right so we can do that by clearing this and the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to add a hover effect so that when we hover on this button or on the dev because let me save this right and go into the front end and then I'm going to open the developers panel and I'm going to inspect this button, right? So this button, even so here's the button, but you consider the button has a div, there's a div wrapper on the button. So we want to say that when we hover on this div, we want our pseudo element to slide down. Okay, so let's go back into um, our design over here. And from there, I am going to add a new selector but before I even do that, let me go and copy everything from here. So copy everything from here, go back. And then over here, I'm just going to paste it, right? Um, one thing that we can do, like one thing that we can do right now is we are going to click on our ID. So the ID might be TT. We are going to see that when we have our on my BTT, we want our sudo element, our after sudo element to slide down. So I'm going to add a hover here. So uh, hold shift and click on your column sign and then type the word hover telling i'm um, telling the um the button that when we hover we want our button after to do something so our hover is on here our button and after pseudo element is on here i'm just going to click on add and then let's click on edit so from here what we are going to do is go into effect and then we are going to go into transform so click on this edit button let's drag it over here and then click on add item that's what we want to deal with translate so we want to deal with translate on the y-axis so let's make this one let's say 100 pixels right so when we have it on here you can see that it comes down um roughly we don't want that we want to actually fix that so to do that i'm going to go back click here on the selector and then do i'm going to add a transition effect to our pseudo element right not the hover element over here but the pseudo element itself so let's click on this and then we're going to go into effect and then in here you're going to see transition let's click on transition add item we are going to add let's say 300 um, millisecond you can change this one to um ease or linear or whatever that you do want 
right since that is done let's go and have it again you can see now it comes down and it goes up so nicely all right so one thing that probably um is not working is that this is not covering the entire space so what we are going to do is go into size right and then i am going to hover on this let me put my focus on here and then hover on this and i'm going to use the shift and up um arrow key to increase the size the width of this so you do have something more like that all right so when you have it like this it looks something like this but we want it to go a bit up so we have 210 pixels and what i'm going to do is that still this being hovered i'm going to focus on the height now and since this is still being uh let's increase it increase it we can increase it a bit more all right let's do um 210 and then i am going to probably what i'm going to do is go back and then go into our mind button that hover that uh, mind button um, semicolon hover and then the button after where we are applying the effect we can go into transform again bring this here and okay so there's a problem here when you remove the hover you can see that the blue is still visible so let's fix that let's go back and then go into the after pseudo element and then let's go into position right so i'm going to type in position and then click on this uh position is over here so what i'm going to do is I, the initial state i want it to go all the way up i don't want it to show so go all the way up so when we hover it comes down like that so when you have it, it comes down like that. So now we don't even have to go into the transform to fix it. You can see that it is working nicely. All right, so let's save it again. And then we're gonna go into the front end and then I'm going to refresh, move away from the developers panel and I'm gonna hover and you can see that our design is working perfectly. So we do have this nice design over here. And the only thing that we did that was really like custom code is to add our content to our pseudo so let me close this you can see that this is the only line of code that we did right because there is nowhere uh in breakdance where you can put just like this two like um what's the name i've forgotten the name yeah these two um sides over here there's no way to do that so you have to put it manually like this so this is um let's call this the water flow uh, button so something flows in and then it expands and it, it takes the entire background all right uh, my name is nyako and um, thank you for watching if you did learn anything um you can subscribe to the channel if you did like the video too you can subscribe to the channel if you're looking for um also breakdance component library i do have a breakdance component library that you can subscribe to for um yourself i do have a ton of great um components on there and also, if you want to get breakdowns, you can use the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.